Let's find dimensions of rectangular box of maximum volume such that the sum of lengths of its 12 edges is 24. Here is a nice sketch of the rectangular box. It looks kind of cube, but let's pretend that it's rectangle. It doesn't really matter because we will find out the answers through mathematics. So it has 12 edges, as you can see, and it has, for example, if I call uh, this side Y, how many Ys do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 Ys, 4 Zs, and 4 Xs. Thus, we can build the equation that 4X plus 4Y plus 4Z should end up to 24. That's what they say over here. The sum of the lengths of its 12 edges is 24. So the first equation is here. Now we need to have a relationship. Uh, well, I would say this is a relationship between the edges and the restriction we have. 24 is the maximum length. I can actually simplify it by dividing by 4. And I'll have x plus y plus z equals to 6. And that is what we call constraints or restrictions. Let's put it in the box. Now, what are we doing in this problem? We are finding dimension of the box with the maximum volume. So let's write down the formula for the volume. If we call each side x, y, z, volume will be x times y times z. And this is what you call objective function, and we want to maximize this. So this is the model, mathematical model, with given constraints or restrictions and the objective function to maximize. We can decrease the number of variables in the objective function. It has three variables, but we can decrease to have two variables. Let's, for example, solve for z and plug it over here. So if z is solved, it will be 6 minus x and minus y plug into v. Then the v, down, uh, the volume function, becomes x times y times 6 minus x minus y. Just like we had it in calculus 1, we want to differentiate this function, but we don't want to deal with too many variables. That's what you call um, decreasing the numbers of dimensions. So maybe we should simplify not to deal with not to deal with chain rule. I guess, yeah, why not? And product rule and stuff. So it's going to be 6xy minus x squared y minus x y squared and this is the function we will be maximizing how to maximize things so step one build a uh, sketch the graph step two build the mathematical model step three finally do calculus calculus is where we start looking for maximum or minimum or the optimal solution that's what you call optimization problem optimization problem. So optimization process starts now. Let's find partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y. Find critical points and then find which one gives you the critical, uh, the minimum or uh, maximum. Which one maximizes the volume? Yeah. Partial derivative with respect to x will be 6y minus 2xy minus y squared. With respect to y, I'm looking at x as a constant, so 6x minus x squared minus 2xy. Uh, pause the video if you need to think about it a little bit, but this is how I do it. So hopefully you can catch up. We set each equation to be equal to 0 in D and E. In this case, there will be no D and E points, those are polynomials. And then we try to solve this mass. So again, choose the method you want to use here. I would factor out y and x from each equation. Then it will be y factored out 6 minus 2x minus y equals to 0. x factored 6 minus x minus 2y equals to 0. From this system, I immediately have two solutions. y is 0 and x is 0. This is not a couple. So, these, each 0 comes from a different equation. So now I can plug 0 
or do like so. Let me explain to you step by step because I can see people get confused on this part. Equation number one gives you y equals zero. Plug into two to find the corresponding pair for y equals zero. When y is two, it will be x multiplied by six minus x minus zero equals to zero. Six x minus x squared. And actually, you don't have to distribute to be honest. x 6 minus x is 0. And now you have two solutions. x equals 0 and x equals 6. So, very nice result here. Now, keep moving to the second equation. The second equation gave me x equals to 0. Plug it into 1 into 1. I really can expect the couple 0, 0 because I already got it from the previous solution. But let's see if we have extra solutions. In this case, it will be y times 6 minus y. And I will have again two solutions, y equals to 0 and y equals 6. So the problem is none of these solutions are good. So we kind of wasted lots of time here, and I wanted you to understand why. These solutions are not in the domain. Let's go back to the constraints. The constraints tell me y plus x plus z should give you 6. It means none of them should be 6. If even one of them is 6, there will be zeros, and there is no box with zero height, and zero widths, or zero lengths, and zero height. And we also don't want to have zero lengths at the first place. So these are not in a domain. Not in the domain of this um, applicational problem. So we need more points. To get more points, let's actually do the substitution method. Which means let's solve for one of these. Let's uh, just take these. And solve them separately because we only used for now y equals to zero and x equals to zero but there's still two parts left to do so let's continue six minus two x minus y equals to zero let's solve for y y will be six minus two x put it in the box plug into two that was equation number one. When I plug it into 2, I'll have 6 minus x minus 2 multiplied by 6 minus 2x, because this is my y. Simplify. 6 minus x minus 12 plus 4x equals to 0. 6 minus 12 is minus 12, minus x plus 4x plus 3x equals to 0. Finally, we get some kind of normal solution, which is, let me simplify, 12 equals 3x. It's going to be not 12. That's why I got confused. Let's have 6 minus 12 minus 6 equals 3x. x equals 2. That will be a good solution. If x equals 2, we're going back to this box, plug it here, then we're going to have y, 6 minus 2 times 2, which is 6 minus 4, which is also 2. So we have a critical point, critical point 2 and 2. Now, if we repeat the whole process with the second equation over here, that will give us the same solutions. I checked, so you can try that. You can also solve for x, plug into the another one, and you'll get 2 and 2 critical point. So you have x equals 2, y equals 2. And you need to check that this actually gives you when you're looking for the maximized um, part. So let's build our second derivatives. We kind of can conclude 
before building second derivatives, we can conclude that there are no other critical points. So 2, 2 and f at 2, 2 plug into the original function, which was which also gonna give you 2. So now you have 2, 2, 2, 2. That will be the only solution. 2, 2, 2. That's gonna give you optimal optimal this maximum solution solution so we can conclude that uh, x equals y equals z is 2 but we could actually check it using second derivative test which gives us you need to quickly find second derivative of x with respect to x let's go back to the derivatives here with respect to x is just minus 2y minus 2y now with respect to now y with respect to y will be minus 2x and any mixed one will work. So for example, this one with respect to y. 6 minus 2x minus 2y. 6 minus 2x minus 2y. 6 minus 2x minus 2y. Let me check. 6. I could change by taking this one with respect to x. 6 minus 2x minus 2y. Yeah, matches. Very nice. Now, instead of actually finding uh, this product, I would plug the point 2 and 2 first. The minus 4 and minus 4. This gives me 6 minus 4 and minus 4, which is minus 2. And this one is minus 2. So the number is going to be 8 minus minus 2 times minus 2 is 4 so the answer is 4 it is positive so it doesn't really give us any information it's not a settle point that's the only thing we know so not settle point then we need to check f x x and remember at the point 2 and 2 can be minus 4 that one is negative and negative Remember, uh, first test gave us plus, second test gave us minus, so it's going to be set phase, and that gives us maximum. So it gives us local maximum. And since there are no other critical points, it should be global maximum. You could also use a global um, maximum tests we have on the closed interval because as i mentioned before this problem has a domain so you can just check the only critical point we found and compare it at the end points which we will not have optimal solutions and this is how you work with optimization problems